Hey everyone, it's Dominic from the Primetime Treasure eBay store, sitting right outside the next Target in a state sale for tomorrow. And so I'm gonna get my name on the sign up sheet list and uh, we'll check it out, see what it looks like, and uh, do a little walk up and um, get our name on the list. So we'll be back here tomorrow, but uh, let's take a little look at what we got. Okay, so here is a close up of the house. Uh, it's about 1,500 square feet according to the data from Zillow. So that means they're not going to let a lot of people in here at once. And it's one of the reasons I wanted to get here and get my name on the list because this is what I'm going to start off with tomorrow. My wife, uh, Miss Primetime, is going to be with me helping me out. So uh, I'm going to put her name on the list as well. Let's go up to the list and see where we're at. And you can see here we would be number 35 and 36. Now, this is why you want to get here in advance sometimes because it's questionable whether or not I'll even get in on the first round tomorrow. So, now you notice there's no pen. It's customary to leave a pen. Why is there no pen? Well, someone could have taken it by accident. However, I doubt that. What most likely is the case is that someone took the pen so that no one else could sign up on the list a little bit of competitiveness there however you can't foil prime time like that and i have a pen and i'm going to put my name right there there we go i'm all set gonna put my wife's name below and um that's it i should just write prime time on there how do you, do you think that will work out i don't know if they go for that anyway uh we'll be back tomorrow and uh We'll see how it goes. All right, we're back. We are here, long line of cars, and we are just gonna walk straight in. Did not matter that I signed up on the list yesterday. Everyone just uh, got to go in, so sometimes it works to sign on the list, sometimes it doesn't matter. Here we go. I really don't know what to make of these Leonardo DiCaprio heads, but this is definitely something good. Uh, tank top with a looks like a skeleton. These are something you should definitely look for. We'll go for like 20. Always look for ink, printing ink, but you want to go with the name brand. So this brother will be $15 uh, when we sell it, but you can get it probably for like a quarter. So we'll put that right there. But these are the um, generic replacement ones. These are worthless. Don't pick these up. The Leo shirt and what you see underneath. This is really cool. They go for about a hundred. We'll get it for 10. Slap the shipping label right there. You're set. So I dug this out of the clothing pile. It was right on the bottom. The best stuff is always on the bottom as a general rule. This brand, um, looking at the comps, it doesn't sell well. Um, the reason I'm picking it up though, it is new with tags. Now even the new with tags doesn't generally do well, but I like the color. These different colors on it are really nice. So we're going to go for it for, uh, for that reason. I think that will sell it. Okay, so DVDs, here we go. You got to know if it's a complete series or not. And this is all the seasons. One, two, three, four, five, six, sitting right there. Um, goes anywhere from $65 to $150 pre-owned. So it's a definite easy pickup because these are going to be around two bucks a piece. And I'll probably get a deal buying them in bulk right there. And of course, don't forget about Sesame Street. These are your friends. And here, this is going to go sell for about seven, $16, $17 easily. So pick this up. Well, I came home with the Sesame Street DVD, but not the Lost DVDs. I had a little issue at checkout. The people who run that particular estate sale, uh, there's really two main people involved in it. There's one person who does checkout and one person who's in charge of the whole thing. And she generally goes around the different rooms, monitor what's going on and, you know, fixes things that need to be fixed and, you know, adjusted from customers around rummaging through it and stuff like that, like clothing piles and things like that. Um, so. The person who normally does the checkout is awesome with me with pricing. In fact, the, the people who ran this sale were the ones who ran the sale last week where I bought the red flashing light that I did the video on and um, you know, it's the one like I got for 20 bucks and sold it for 125. 
that's the place where I got all those drawings, uh, you know, all those diagrams of the trains and of the gears and everything. And I got that whole big box for eight bucks. You remember that? If you haven't, just go back to my um, uh, video for last week and you'll see it. But so that's the kind of pricing you normally get. And unfortunately, when I went to check out what the lost DVDs, the person who runs the sale happened to come over to the checkout area and she wanted $25 for all the DVDs. Now, normally I could get those lost DVDs for two bucks a piece uh, when I see them at garage sales and, and that sort of thing. So paying $25 for is a little more than I wanted to go. I, I like, like I said, I'd like to be around two bucks a piece. I was willing to go up to $15 for all of them, but she wouldn't have it. She wanted to have 25. So I said, no thanks, put it down. You know, no bad feelings or anything like that. But, um, you know, it, 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 would I have been able to make money off it? Yes, I would have. But, uh, again, it's just an issue where when you know you can get it for a certain amount, paying double, I have an issue with that. So that's why I didn't do that. Um, and the other thing is I'm not desperate for inventory. I'm going out trying to find good deals. But, you know, I'm in a situation where, you know, I have the leverage in these situations where if I don't want to buy and pay that price, I could walk away and go home to, you know, a business that, you know, has a ton of inventory ready to send out. So you want to put yourself in that type of situation where you're not necessarily desperate to make a purchase. So uh, with that, uh, move on to the next uh, set of sales after uh, go home and uh, pick up my daughter and, um, you know, get like a little lunch or something. In fact, I'll show you one of the uh, buildings here at Syracuse University. It's, it's amazing. Let me show you. I'll turn the camera around here. So that's the auditorium building at Syracuse University. Beautiful, beautiful building. Love going up there. Right behind there, right behind that hill there is the Carrier Dome where Syracuse University plays. So just thought I'd show you that on a gorgeous day here. Nice, beautiful campus. And uh, just wanted to, uh, just to show you that. Always pick up the talking Chewbacca mask if you can find it. Okay, Chewie. I'll take you home. $10 in the original box. Very good. You should see what they sell for online. They, some of them go up to like $80 or so. So that's completed, sold. All right, Chewy. Hey, everybody. I am back at Primetime Treasure Headquarters. Just wanted to do a brief intermission video with you as I come home just to refresh for a moment and get a little snack for lunch and then head back out for round two just to talk to you a bit about the psychology of negotiating now this is the Chewbacca mask that you just saw you see the sticker price on there of ten dollars that price is totally fair for this item I'm going to do well with it in the original box uh, but I want you to know what he said when I asked him how much are you asking for the Chewbacca mask his words were I was asking ten dollars for it pay very close attention to that I was asking $10, not, he didn't just say $10, he didn't say $10 firm, he said I was asking $10 for it. When someone says that, that is an indicator that they are willing to take less for the item. So I keep that in the back of my mind and I move on to some other things. And those other things were horror movie DVDs. Now, as you know, if you watch my other videos, I love to buy horror movie DVDs, put them into lots, and sell them off in big bundles to horror collectors. And they will pay up for them as long as you have a nice, good lot with some good titles. These are classic titles, things like Child's Play, things like Jeepers Creepers, um, things like Texas Chainsaw Massacre, Hellraiser, those kind of things. So uh, there's also another Texas Chainsaw Massacre movie. And then he had, what well, I like getting these. These are these um, bundled collections where there's five movies in one or this one has 10 movies in one. What's good about that is that when you sell them, you just add these to the total number of movies you have. So for example, right here, you could say you have 15 movies, even though you have two DVD sets, it's 15 movies. And so when you have a lot of them, that adds up to a really big number and that draws collectors into you know, be interested and want to possibly make a purchase from you. So his price on him was $2 a piece. That's higher than I like to go. I like to get them for about a dollar. I will do it sometimes if I need to, but if I can negotiate it down lower, I will. Now he was doing a deal where he would sell two of them for $3. So let's figure out what the price would have been if I wound up buying them all straight up the full price he was asking. So that would have been $10 for Chewbacca. That would have been 
another three dollars here so that puts us up to 13 these two would put us up to 16 these two here would put us up to 19 and then this one being a single would be two dollars so that puts us up at 21 so 21 dollars now i only want to spend 15 how do i get there well i have to think all right i know he's willing to go a little bit lower on the chewbacca mask but i'm going to make it like i'm paying full price for that but i'm just going to take the discount i want out on the dvds so the way i do that is i say to myself all right these two would put me at 13. okay now these two here are going to put me at 16. Now I know 100% that, or 99.9, .9, that if I went up to him and said, would you do that for $15, that he would say yes. I just know it based on experience and just negotiating for so long. So there's a few other ones that I want though. So I know he will do that for 15. The question is, how far can I push it? What if I add another one in? What if I add another one in? What if I add one more in? I felt that that was the max I could go. I could add three more in there and he'd still probably do it for 15. Now, worst case, he says no. And then I say, all right, well, I'll take one out. Maybe I take the Texas Chainsaw Massacre one out because I already have another Texas Chainsaw Massacre title in there. And you kind of work down from there. So I went up to him and I said, no question. I want to know if you make a deal. Um, you know, would you do both uh, the Chewbacca mask and the DVDs for $15? And so he just looks at it. He says, let me see how many DVDs do you have? Now, the reason I'm confident going up to him asking this because there were a lot of DVDs there and just looked like he really just wanted to get rid of them. It was the second day of his sale and there was no one else there shopping. So, you know, it's just less he has to lug in. And he says, sure, I could do that. So you got to ask. You got to have the courage to ask. And now, you know, if you say, okay, we paid $10 for your Chewbacca mask. Well, we got seven DVDs here for another $5. I wound up paying less uh, than a dollar for each one of these. So that's how you do it and make deals and negotiate with people. Plus, the other thing I want to point out, I just talked to you about how I had uh, a situation go awry when I tried to buy those lost DVDs. Did I just give up and say, forget it, I'm frustrated and just go home for the day? No, I just went out and made a great deal on even a higher number of DVDs in the horror genre. So don't give up, just stick with it, go on to the next sale and you just make up for it then. All right, let's head out for round two. Little random garage sale that showed up. So just uh, kind of go out here, you know, yard sale, garage sale, see if we find anything here. So as you probably saw from the street, there's mostly furniture here, but on the way out, I came across this uh, doll, Saucy. Now it's made from Mattel in 1973. It does not have the original clothes, but he's only asking $5 for it. And it really looks like a no brainer because the original box is there. Um, the original clothes may not matter so much. We can find, the, we see the box is in pretty darn good shape and people love, people just buy boxes sometimes. And Mattel is a great brand to look for. See there, 1973. I uh, looked up with the original clothes. This doll is selling for, it's sold twice for around $125. So I'll probably, I'm then gonna pick this up and see what we could do without the original clothes. It just seems like a no risk investment for $5. Okay, we're at another sale. Be on the lookout for Singer products. This is a nice pull-out Singer drawer right there. Opens up right here. Opens up here. Here. Here as well. It's got some threads in there. This is something that will go for anywhere between $30 and $50 to $60. See the price here is $5. I'll try to get it down to three. It does come with accessories. So we've got this here. And in here, there's a whole bunch of threads. So this is an easily sellable item right there. So there it is, Singer sewing uh, box added to the lot of stuff. Got it for $3. All you have to do is ask. 
All right, everyone, well, that's a wrap, and I thought I'd end this off by showing you the two little Muppets that I come home to every day. That's Daisy down there. She's uh, about four or five months old, and that's Smokey, 16 years old. So the two extreme ends of the age continuum, but I uh, got a little Shih Tzu and a little German short-haired pointer. But I hope you enjoyed looking at all the things that I found today as Daisy bothers Smokey here at the end. And I um, hope you hit that like button. Hey, leave her alone. Leave her alone. She just wants to rest. All right? Hit that like button. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Okay? Smokey subscribed, right? Daisy, are you subscribed? You got to get me up to 500 subscribers. Okay? We're at 465. I don't know if they count dogs. But I think they do. So have your dog subscribe. Have your cat subscribe. Maybe we get some fish to subscribe. Anything we could do to get those numbers up, all right? And uh, come by, join the Facebook Reselling Resource Center. We're well over 500 members there. Right, Daisy? We're right over 500 members in the face. Are you in the Facebook Reselling Resource Center? I don't know. Smokey's like, forget this. And, um, you know, make sure you drop a comment down below. People are commenting more. I love to hear what you have to say. And with that, I'm going to let Daisy sign off. You signing off, Daisy? All right. Bye, Smokey. Say goodbye to everybody. Bye, guys.